Welcome to Let's Play Rule the Waves 2 as France starting in 1920. This is episode 30, which feels like some sort of milestone. I had a little look at my analytics, which I don't usually do, but uh, looking at the four playlists I've developed, one for absolute beginners, one for various explainers on tactics and more depth subjects, one on my little experiment playing Germany as a very, very small fleet, and this one, this one is now easily my most successful playlist, and some 3,000 of you have decided to join me and squander your, your leisure time in this fascinating, fascinating game. So thank you very, very much for that. I also get very uh, fed by the really interesting comments that I get. Uh, and in episode 28, I had a couple that I'm just gonna talk about. So firstly, uh, big thanks to uh, Potbellied Slim, who uh, a frequent commentator, uh, insightful, who suggested that I could take the air groups, um, if we have a little look at the pan levy here, which are veterans, and I could take the aircraft squadron size down from this 14 down to 5 or 6 and save myself a stack of money, and he's not wrong. I would, you know, here I've got 2,600, if I reduce these and other squadrons uh, down in size, I would be having a monthly balance of more than 8,000, which is not to be sniffed at. And that's without changing the experience level, which is the, the crucial thing. Now, there is uh, a disadvantage, which is if I then try and reinflate these squadrons up to their proper size, they will drop down a skill level. So you go... Uh, fair, good, veteran, expert. So the veterans would drop down to good, and the goods would drop down to fair. Um, you could create a new squadron. So if I took these fighters down to seven, I could create a new squadron, also of seven, uh, and have that start at fair and work its way up whilst retaining my veteran fighters and saving this ton of money. I think that's uh, a pretty viable thing. Or I could just take the hit and see this squadron reduce from veteran down to good, knowing that that's perhaps better than having a veteran and a fair waiting for the fairs to join up. I don't know, it could go either way, worth discussing. But I'm certainly gonna have a look at that because the money, <laughs> so much money um, will come from that. So that's great. So, you know, you just right click, change the number, and here for uh, 14, Make that five, boom. Uh, and that's all you have to do for all of them. Bit tedious, so I won't do that for all of them just on camera. The second suggestion came from a large man who recommended building what good old Jackie Fisher would have called uh, large light cruisers. Big, fragile, powerful, fast ships. So plus 30 knots, 11 or 12 inch guns, anything up to 20,000. Unfortunately, um, I got all excited with this and thought, well, yes, uh, I like large heavy cruisers that are going to crunch through other ships. Um, so why wouldn't I like even larger ones if we uh, knock something up uh, and take it to 11 inch? At the moment, in 1936, um, it wants to reclassify it as a uh, as a battle cruiser, which is a shame. Even if we you know clear one of the turrets and all that kind of stuff. No, not all of them. Yep. So coming soon, or coming as soon as I can, um, some giant uh, vessel somewhere between a full battle cruiser and a um, and a heavy cruiser will be coming. At the moment. Everyone's heavy cruisers, if we have a look, they all have 10 inch guns. So our new ones are very much on par with everybody else's. Let's crack on. I've been through my air groups and for the active ones, I've taken them down to 10 strength. That still feels like a viable squadron, whereas five um doesn't that's increased my monthly spend to four and a half so a two thousand increase by all means if you wish crunch it down even more still want to protect 
some of that excellent crew quality that I have on some of my aeroplanes. With the money, I can go around and uh, build up some of these air bases. So let's just do that quickly. They are all at a very minimal level. And if tensions with Japan do increase, then we will need to, uh, to do something about it. So 60 is our max at the moment. Um, we are missing some in here and Linda. I'm going to add Lindas. Actually. Having two air bases in roads seems like a good idea. And if we go down, not really sure I need much in Africa, uh, Indian Ocean, not Southeast Asia. Yes. We've got all the bases we can manage in Asia, in the South Pacific, probably just add another one again. Okay, happier with that. We've got three lovely heavy cruisers under development. We've got a new carrier arriving in uh, just a couple of months, five months time, and this um, revised light cruiser on its way. If we have a look at the plan in 36, we should be looking to rebuild the Redata Tablo. Sorry for that pronunciation and starting on a new battleship. So let's, um, let's have a look at that. Service. So here's the Red du Table. Go for the rebuild. 13 inch guns. Wish it was more, it's not. A small refit for 2000 if we uh, Go to advanced directors, could do that, but doesn't really fit the bill for a modern battleship. Given that we want 25 knots as a minimum for our older battleships. Replace the machinery, go to oil, get up to 25. It would be nice to take it further, but 25 is the maximum that the hull form can achieve, I believe. Oh, well, I thought so, but no, it seems to be happy with 26. What's a surprise? Note that the guns could be more modern, Ray. Hmm, 26 knots. We'll have to give that a little bit of a think. Well, I've thought my thoughts. That took me by a bit of surprise. I've checked with other classes, such as the Bouvet, and it is true they are restricted by their hull form to 25 knots. But for the Redoutable, no. They are happy to go all the way up to 28 knots. So yes, that lets them join our fast battleship wing um, which I like very much. Now it does cost, if I take this 28 knots and bring it back down to 25, you'll see the cost is about 30,000. Whereas if I bring it back up to 28 knots, the cost now is uh, 56. Also the time uh, has increased to 21 months, but you know, that's okay. Uh, it's reasonable protection, 13 inch belt, four inch deck, Certainly better than many of my other legacy battleships. I've increased the gun caliber up to um, caliber. I've increased the gun quality up to one. Also for the six inch guns, I've increased that to quality one. I've lowered the number of six inch guns from 14 down to 10 in order to make um, the tertiary guns, the AA, go up to uh, 16. And I've increased the weapons fit for the medium and light anti-aircraft up to the maximum. I've got 35 heavy 
uh, anti-aircraft factors, which I'm pretty pleased with. And then finally, I've had to remove the torpedo tubes and I've had to change the engine priority up to speed. Nonetheless, for 56,000, that seems like a bit of a bargain, to be honest. Um, I'm very pleased with that. So yeah, this will give this and its sister ship quite uh, a lift in how long it will be an effective battleship. Let's save that, click OK, and go along. And And there we go, there's one of those under construction. Two more months and we'll have some more money to uh, start on our next new battleship. Hooray. So that's a pretty good uh, January. Thanks for the comments, guys. It really, really helps. Off into February. Uh, yes, the Italians would like to buy some armor stuff. Yeah, heck. Our new float planes are ready. Hooray. So here the, uh, the Farman is the clear winner. Um, slight increase in maximum speed. That doesn't really matter. Not much change in the cruise speed, which is a shame. But the range has gone from 149 to 207, very much. Uh, and the rest is moot, really. I don't really care about the bomb load and things like that. In the comments, uh, Peter Davis has argued that float planes are a bit rubbish because their range never really matches that of uh, torpedo bombers. Let's just click OK there. Go to aircraft types and look at our torpedo bomber. And yeah, that has a range, light range of 300 miles against 200 miles for our brand new uh, float plane. And yeah, if, if you're sitting stiff with a carrier aviation, perhaps in the 40s, I think uh, Peter has a fair point. Um, float planes become to look a bit archaic. But in the 30s, where our, uh, our carrier force is really quite small still, I would like my torpedo bombers to mainly have torpedoes and use uh, float planes on cruisers to um, go out. They're only going out um, a relatively short distance, 200 miles, but then my strike uh, is not that much difference. So the torpedo bomber, although it has a 300 mile um, range light, with a uh, torpedo, it has 182. So it is comparable to a torpedo bomber with a torpedo. So yeah, something to think about later on. You can, in the 1940s, when you've got more carriers, you can probably just remove the float planes from cruisers and just rely on torpedo bombers. But for now, uh, I think they're useful, but I can see it could go either way in discussions. Looking at the international tensions, I noticed that um, Britain and Italy, my two targets for the next war, seem to be jolly happy with me for some odd reason, where <laughs> other people are a bit more annoyed. In fact, that reminds me, the uh, retrotapla that I've just sent off for uh, a rebuild, I sent it to a British yard because they offered the greatest weight saving and because we're only at uh, a teeny tiny level two in terms of tensions with Britain. So hopefully we can get that back pretty quickly. Anti-British Rebellion in India, wow. And the Amaral Cicel has finished a reconstruction and a nice bit of research. Let's just put that cruiser onto uh, reserve. Another breakthrough. Re-equipping of our carrier with the new Pez. Let's just go to the air groups. Oh, okay. Sometimes I worry that when they change planes, it reduces the um, experience level, but it doesn't seem to have at the moment. Well done, chaps. So all that lovely money that we saved by 
putting some of the airplanes into reserve as uh, cashed in with extra air bases. But let's just go back to the base view and look at some of these air bases and see if we can expand them further. The assumption that eventually they're going to come in useful in a war against Japan. There we go. Got all of that building. We're doing two more turns till the carrier. Let's just say no to all of the reminders that are not all of our air bases are done. Right. Have a look at fighters. Aircraft types. Air fighter. Uh, there we are. Allegedly a lot slower than this new American fighter. Mm. Don't think we've got anything out at the moment. Dive bomber. Newish dive bomber is fine. Pedo bomber. That's still new as well. Float plane we've just done. Flying boat. A 1933 flying boat. Well, according to these stats, it's still one of the best. And our medium bomber. Bomber. And again, that. Ooh. Well. Some of these American medium bombers have a huge range, reportedly. It's only from last year. Hmm. I mean, these figures, our intelligence estimates, and as you can see, we're not investing a great deal in our intelligence at the moment. And here we are with our lovely new carrier, being commissioned. A new cruiser from Germany has arrived in port. Um, if you want to know why we don't have a ship like this, ask the old politicians. That raised, yeah, ooh, increases the budget, lowers prestige. Yeah, let's, let's increase the budget, shall we? And a new breakthrough as well. And another one. Ooh, it lifts. No. So halfway through the year, a new carrier delivered. Uh, I'll put some planes on that in a second. A good monthly balance, five and a half thousand, and a little bit of a cushion, biggest I've had actually in ages. Tensions have cooled down ever so slightly, although a little bit worse with Britain. Don't know why. We look at the almanac uh, and look particularly at building. So battleships building, the Russians have won, the British have two, the Americans have won. Um, battle cruisers building, Germany has two, Britain has another two on top of the two it's building, uh, Italy one, and America one. So America has got two building, Japan has none, Italy has one, Britain has four, Russia has one, Germany has two. We currently have none. So seems like it's that favorite time of year, everybody, time to design a new battleship. So. That, I think, will be the uh, theme for our next episode. I hope you can join us for that. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching and stay safe.